National Grid expects homes will face no problems. So, could, if, possibly, etc., etc., etc. It just struck me as wise caution rather than QQs for candles and primus stoves. Let's see if we can put all of it in some context with Tom Bradley, who's Head of Energy and Green Growth at the Cavendish Advocacy Group. Good to see you. How did you read that statement from National Grid yesterday evening? Hi, Alistair. I think, for me, it comes down to the semantics of it. There's a difference between having a plan and planning. And actually, for the energy networks, for our energy companies, I'd rather that they were prepared and that they had a plan in case of the worst case scenario than that they didn't. And we were all just left to, uh, to chance. I totally agree. Uh, but that's not what happened as far as the news stands were concerned or even the late night news bulletins. I mean, there is a real truth in all of this that you can over egg something and then add to the problem itself. No, there certainly is. And, you know, I'm very conscious that people are concerned about not only cost, but also supply of energy this winter. Um, and I think households up and down the country will be worried reading that news coming out of National Grid um, last night. But I would say, actually, the UK probably is in one of the more beneficial positions than the rest of Europe in terms of our energy security. And instead of thinking around the, the Russia-Ukraine war, actually, we rely very little on that Russian oil and gas, fortunately. Yeah, and I saw those figures as well. I think it's about 2 or 3%. Uh, we have a big dependency on Norway, around about 40%, but we are around about 40% self-sufficient. So the guidance really should be take it gently where you can, be sensible where you can, but don't panic. Absolutely. And I yeah. think one of the things I was quite surprised to read this morning was that debate going on between Bayes and Number 10 around... Uh, energy efficiency advice um, to households and actually chatting to energy supply firms, energy networks, they all agree that whether it's net zero, whether it's energy security, reducing the actual amount of yeah. energy that we're using is fundamental. Yeah, it's, 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 it's back to the absolute fundamental is one good word, but the basic principles of economics as well, called supply and demand, uh, that wherever possible. Uh, and there was sensible guidance in that national grid thing. Like, for example, if you can manage to do the washing uh, overnight uh, and uh, tumbler dryers perhaps should be banned, I don't know, but certainly things like washing should be done overnight. There are sensible tips uh, in that statement as well. Uh, I know that the newspapers have published them as uh, as widely as the headlines. Um, one step back into the, uh, uh, the, the really serious uh, aspect, uh, what is your assessment as uh, an objective analyst of the supply outlook this winter? Forget the weather for a moment and what we do with our own consumer behaviour, but, but what does the market think the supply stakes are this winter? I mean, it will be looking tight. And you have this over the heat wave in the summer, actually, um, with energy supply and demand almost crossing there um, and as on the verge of sort of running out of spare capacity. Um, I do think we will need to be bringing on back online those coal power plants that we put on standby. Um, I do think we'll need to be looking at energy storage. Um, and I'm pleased that actually over the summer, government have started to have those conversations with those energy firms to create that backup plan, but it will be very tight. D does that mean if you were to bring back online the, the um, uh, as it were, mothballed coal-powered fire stations, that you're also going to have to mothball green levies and net zero uh, targets? I think, you know, Graham Stewart has made a very good point earlier around UK actually being energy being more beneficial for the environment. Um, that 2050 target is a long time off, but it will stand. And we are having that review from central government around actually how do we get to net zero. But I think one of the things that we've seen from government is that energy security piece has become fundamental.
Yeah. Final point, and it flows directly from that, Tom. Um, would you also like to see the government be a little more proactive, perhaps even a little more bullish uh, on things like fracking and accelerating these smaller Rolls-Royce style nuclear power uh, reactors? These things take time and bringing new oil and gas fields online take time. But, but government can accelerate it or slow it down. Do they need to accelerate it all a wee bit? Yeah, absolutely. We need to put the uh, foot to the metal. And I was with a number of hydrogen companies up in Birmingham at Conservative Party conference a few days ago, and they're all saying the same thing. We're all ready to go. We just need the green light from government.